Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, about a month ago, Golos was banned. Very sad. Very sad. Unfortunately, it took greater casualties than they previously had imagined. Our, our wonderful mono white Golos Tron deck is now dead. I, I don't think we could fix this one. Like, it was pretty important. <laughs> it's, it's just, I can't handle it. Like, this was, it was too good. It was gone too soon. If you haven't watched the video on it, you can go back and, and watch that. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. But it's gone now. We would like to honor Golos here. With a um, moment of silence. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Uh, goodbye to a real one. Alright, we can go to the actual video now. Hello everyone, welcome back to Jake Divers. We know it's been a minute. Uh, today, we have a, a cool looting deck based on Extus Arik Overlord. Now our good boy Calamitous Cactus did request a very specific brew of Extus, but while I was building it, I realized that it was just looking way too good. It looked really good. And so for entertainment purposes and entertainment purposes only, we had we, to make it like really stupid. That's right. We built it. We built this crazy. So buckle up and let's get ready for this deck tag. Yeah. Just so we know, because our commander's kind of complicated. This was a Strixhaven like flip card. Uh, I promise this was current, like, at the time when we made this deck, but, you know, it's been a minute. So, the first side, he's a 2-4 with double strike, which doesn't matter. The cool part is Magecraft. Whenever we cast and copy an instant or sorcery spell, return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And in the back side, he's an 8-mana sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. Spoiler alert, we're gonna have a lot. This spell costs two less for each creature sacrificed this way. And when you cast it, each opponent sacrifices a creature and you create a 3-6 avatar with haste. And whenever it attacks, it deals three damage to each opponent. All right, so the most powerful thing in our deck are these adventure cards. Because when you play Extus on the creature half, all of the adventure parts are going to trigger the Magecraft ability, while in the graveyard, all of them are going to count as a creature, a non-legendary creature, to return from the graveyard. You can bring them back and then cast them as the adventure to activate and bring back a different adventure card. Now, Murderous Rider, particularly, when he dies, he gets put on the bottom of the owner library, but if you loot him away or something like that, it still does count as a creature in your graveyard. Uh, we just included him mostly because he's a good card. <laughs> yeah, it just happens to work really well with our deck. The Probably the best adventure is this Merchant of the Veil vale here, because he loots and we do a lot of looting in this deck. So being able to get looting back out of our graveyard or just cast it and have an infinite loot engine, like he's really good. And Order of Midnight, it's a two mana two two with flying. Its adventure is return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So while we're doing all of our looting, uh, we can also bring back any creatures that we may loot away um, while also returning more cards back with exact Extus, um, so it just really keeps our hand full uh, for pretty low mana costs and is a 2 2 body that we can sacrifice to the back half of Extus. Yeah, we kind of got the same thing going on with the Falmir Knight. He just he draws a card, you know, not not bad, not good. He's, he's chilling, you know. And then here are some of our looting cards. So it's a big part of the deck. Um, we loot as much as possible, return as many cards as possible back to our hand um, from the graveyard to just generate like a massive card advantage. Um, so Plarg, Dean of Chaos, uh, it does have a backside, but it's not really ever gonna be that useful for us. So 
Um, we're mainly, mainly focused on this front side right here. So for two mana, it's a 2-2. Two, two. You can tap them to discard a card and draw a card. So you get this out early, and you can just keep looting every turn, which is really good for us. Uh, and you could also pay five mana to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with converted mana cost three or less, um, and cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put all revealed cards not cast this way onto the bottom of your library in any in a random order. So uh, it's kind of just like a value engine card, so it can loot when we have cards to discard. If we don't have cards to discard, uh, we can dig for a card. All around pretty good. One thing of note is this is a legendary creature, so you can't bring it back with Ecstasy's ability, but we still thought it was worth it to include it just of its value engine-y effect. Yeah, and then next step we got the Faceless Salvaging, which is two mana discard then draw and then rebound lets you play it for free next turn also to note we have just you know the more standard looting cards like faithless looting in the deck but we just we wanted to talk about the cool ones that were more new so this one's just like a standard you know you loot twice pretty efficient gives you mage craft twice and then we got illuminate history for four mana you can discard any number of cards then draw that many then, if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, you get a 3-2 spirit that we can either attack with or sacrifice to something. Um, and uh, later on, we do have a couple of token synergies. So um, it's this isn't a bad token for those token synergies later on. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Um, and lastly, the last looting card we wanted to mention here is Insolent Neonate. Um, it's kind of an old card. You might remember it from some of the old modern dredge decks that had red in it. Um, but we wanted to include it in this cut because it's a creature. So you can bring it back with Extus and keep looting um, if you have no better targets in your graveyard. It's, it's not bad. Not at all. We also have this cycling package. So... Um, we have a lot more cycling creatures, so if you want to go ahead and take a look at the deck list, um, you can go ahead and look at that. But these are some of the more interesting cycling creatures that we have. Um, Arc Fiend of Infir. All right, if near? If near is how I'd if say. Near. Yeah, oh, well. Uh, it's five mana, five four with flying. And whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. So with all the looting and cycling that we do in this deck, um, it can just be a way to lock out your opponents from having creatures, especially in go wide decks where they're only their power and toughness are only one or two. Um, it's pretty good to be able to discard one or two cards every turn and board wipe your opponent's token deck every turn. Very, very strong. Angel of Ruins. It's probably one of the coolest ones in the deck, just because not only is it a, uh, a cycling card that you can cycle away and keep returning back with Extus, but you can just also cast it as artifact and enchantment removal as well. Yeah, pretty good one. And then we got Scion of Darkness for 8 mana, 6-6 six, six Trample. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So you can just steal people's stuff out of their graveyard and smack them with it. It's always a fun thing to do. You know, when, for when that graveyard deck just happens to have their giant win con in their graveyard, and, you know, you, you can take that. So then uh, the big finisher for our deck, or one of them, is these big mass reanimation cards. So as an example, we have Living Death for five mana, and each player exiles all creature cards from his or her graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures he or she controls, then puts all cards he or she exiled this way onto the battlefield. So this effectively switches everybody's like board with their graveyard, like creatures wise. So you get every creature out of your graveyard onto the battlefield at the same time. It's like all those cycling cards that we discarded come out for free. All the adventures in our graveyard, anything we sacrificed, 
and there are a couple other creatures that we just kind of discard the looting. Like, we're going to have a stocked graveyard. We can just bring it all back at one time. And that's what all these cards kind of do. Uh, so, Finale of Eternity. Um, destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. If X is ten or more, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Pretty standard. Rise of the Dark Realms. We know it. We love it. We hate it. <laughs> Nine mana. Sorcery. Put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Pretty nice because even if somebody has exiled your graveyard or anything like that, or you've just been getting really unlucky and don't have but like four creatures in your graveyard and it's not gonna win you the game like nine mana spells should, um, you can always win off of somebody else's graveyard because this brings all creatures from all graveyards out of the battlefield under your control. And Garna probably one of the greedier cards in our deck but it also helps us win even when it's not being greedy because garnet when it enters the battlefield return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn so it really if we have like a really good pop-off turn with a bunch of cycling creatures and a bunch of looting cards um and we're able to get a lot of creatures in our graveyard all in one turn uh we can just play garna return all of those back to our hand and keep cycling and lets us draw a lot more cards than we normally would have that turn but it also is really good because it gives other creatures you control haste um so when we play any of these mass reanimate spells um and reanimate garna as well all the creatures that we play out that turn also get haste so if we play rise of the dark realms we get an attack with every single creature from every single graveyard the same turn so quite powerful um is a little greedy up front but on the tail end it's also going to help us win the game so next up we have some like discard and cycling payoff cards so first up will be bone miser for five minutes a four four zombie and whenever you discard a creature card you get a two two black zombie creature token and whenever you discard a land you add double black mana and whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, you draw a card. So, like, again, we do a ton of discarding in this deck, so just being able to get some additional value off of it is going to help us out a lot. Yeah, and remember, every time you cycle a card, that counts as discarding it. Mm -hmm. So, if you cycle a creature card, which we cycle a lot of creatures in this deck, you know, you're getting a zombie just from cycling that creature card. Yeah, that's right. So then to the same end, we have the Surly Badger Sword for four mana. It's a 3-3 Badger Dinosaur, just a wonderful creature type there. And then whenever we discard a creature, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. And whenever you discard a land card, you make a token, a, a treasure token, I should say. And then whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, uh, the Badger Sword fights up to one target creature you don't control. So he's got some mana generation, he can grow into a big threat. And he's kind of a removal engine, so that's a very flexible card here. Fluctuator is a really interesting card here because we play that and pretty much every single card in our deck now cycles for zero mana. So, or every card with cycling anyway. Um, this lets us have crazy turns where we can start playing a bunch of cards um, and getting all your creatures back with Extus from your graveyard, cycle them the same turn. So you're able to just cast as many um, instants or sorceries as you can, and each one has just draw a card stapled onto the back of it. So it can lead to some crazy powerful pop-off turns um, and draw us a lot of cards. Alhammerit's Archive is the same thing. So for five mana, um, we don't really gain any life in this deck, but if we would gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. But the real reason we're running this is if you would draw a card, except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So every time we cycle a card, we're gonna draw two cards instead of one card. This actually lets us create massive, massive card advantage situations. Um, and as you know, cards win games so draw more cards equals more games won 
the next stuff is like the really cool part of our deck. Yeah, this is where it gets spicy. Yeah, so we got some like like token generators here. So the idea is once we draw into one of these, we wanna we run some sacrifice outlets in the deck. So we actually wanna sacrifice our own commander to put him into the command zone. And then we're gonna start casting the sorcery side and start like populating the three six blood avatars and just making our motto of like creatures that deal three damage even if they get blocked. Like it's, it's pretty funny. So first up to that end is gonna be Song of the World Soul for six mana, it's an enchantment. And whenever you cast a spell, you populate. So you know, we, we cast a lot of spells in this deck, so we're gonna we're gonna populate a lot of creatures. And like even if we're not populating blood avatars, we have a decent, like not a ton, but a decent amount of token generation in this deck. So like it's not gonna be useless even by itself. And then next up is the Gear Red's Belligerence for double red and X. A sorcery. It deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. And whenever a creature dealt damage this way, dies this turn populate. So like if you have a lot of mana, which you could if you have like a Bone Miser or a Badger Shore out, like you could create a ton of tokens this way by just like popping off a bunch of random creatures. Like everyone's got like random 1-1s one on their board that you can just like ping down. And then the last one will be the Anointed Procession for three and a white. And if effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice of that many tokens instead. So like, again, all our random token cards give us an extra one and we get two blood avatars per cast, which is just gonna get out of hand really fast. Hard to stop, especially since they have haste and they attack each player essentially. So you can really, once you draw uh, one or two of these cards, uh, you can really just change gears in your deck and start really creating some blood avatars and Try to swing for the win that way Quite powerful and then finally we just had some random cards that we just wanted to talk about But they didn't really fit like a particular thing first step will be we do run an Avacyn in our deck the idea is to just kind of discard it early, like you have no reason to hold on to it in your hand and then you just try to reanimate it out with like those big like living in type spells we were talking about before also if you don't have the haste um it's it protects your giant board because um if you mass reanimate your entire board and then pass turn without attacking that same turn you know you're giving everybody in the whole game an opportunity to try to play a board wipe to stop you avacyn angel of hope protects your giant board and lets you get around another turn to try to attack with everything so just some extra insurance uh, and trying to help us actually make our plan work. It's also powerful when they can't start killing your blood avatars as well so you can get another turn with them and try to attack with those. Just an all around great card to reanimate. Sins Enlistment, uh, you've seen this before on our channel. It was in our Boros Landfall deck. You wanna go check out that video as well. Um, but it's four mana sorcery. Uh, put two one one white Kithkin soldier creature tokens into play, and it has retrace. So you can play this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. So as you know, we have some discard synergies. So discarding a land card uh, could give us some bonuses, um, but it's just a card that we can continue to play. Um, as many times as we want to as long as we have the lands in hand um, and keep on making tokens to either sacrifice to the backside of our commander or um, if our front side of our commander is out every time we play the retrace part you know it is activating magecraft so it's nice to always have an option of an instant or sorcery that we can play from our graveyard um, and play as many times as we want from our graveyard, assuming we have the lands in hand. So just an all around great card in this deck. It helps us with a lot of our, our plan. And then next up is a really interesting one. We have uh, Crack the Thumbless, a uh, two mana, two two wizard. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you flip a coin. And if you lose the flip, return that spell to its owner's hand. But if you win, you get to copy that spell and choose new targets. So this lets you kind of double up on all of your 
mage craft triggers even if you lose the flip because it'll just go back to your hand and you can just play it again later so you you get like double value out of all your cards or like i mean yeah you can't really get double but like it's it's good <laughs> and then squee goblin bob three mana one one not really that great but the big kicker here is at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return Squeed, Goblin of Bob from your graveyard to your hand. So with all the looting that we do in our deck, it's nice to have a card that is basically begging to be discarded. Um, it basically turns Faithless looting into draw two, discard one. Uh, so quite powerful. Uh, keeps coming back is always a card we can loot. And just helps with the card advantage game. So... That's going to be it for Exodus uh, Looting Tribal. Uh, if you have any questions about the deck or any suggestions for what we should put in, maybe something you think we should take out, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you can guess the art in the background that we've had the whole time, we'll feature your comment in the next video. All right. Have a good day.